Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be discussing items that did not work out and it could not be a better timing because right now I have cramps, I don't feel that great, and for some reason I'm wearing a full face of makeup and I decided I still wanted to sit down and film this, so uh, she's in a mood. It's also like the weirdest weather in California where it was like super hot and then now it's like super crazy windy. Anybody else like so weirded out by that? It's like loud outside and it's a day. Anyway, I have another bin of new things that I've tried out that I just wanted to tell you guys about sooner rather than later because these are newer and you might be making purchasing decisions on them right now and they just did not work out for me. Oh, right before I started filming, this is not a fail, but I recently told you guys about this. This is the iconic, wait, did I tell you about this yet? I'm not even sure. This is newer. This is the iconic London Prep Set Glow and use a light hand with this. If you notice that I'm a little like glowier than normal, like it might look good on camera, but close up, I actually have like flecks of silver glitter on my face. And a little bit of this is good. A lot of this is an absolute no. So I wanted to share that with you guys, but oh, this is a really good spray. It is, just when you use it the right way. I do wanna update you guys. There has been such huge discussion right now of why you are not seeing my videos in your subscription feed and YouTube has made changes and I've been made aware of those changes. And I just, I wanna tell you guys what's up. You need to hit the notification bell because it's just not enough these days to be subscribed to a channel. If you wanna see that channel's videos in your sub feed, then you need to hit the bell. So go ahead and ring my bell. I'm just trying to let you be able to see the content when it goes up. Some people are having an issue with my videos not being on my actual homepage right at 10 a.m. and I do upload 10 a.m. Monday through Friday every single day. I've been doing that for five years. I cannot even believe that actually. So if you want to be served, my videos, make sure that you hit the bell. It is super important. Okay, let's get into the junk. Junk number one. You guys, this is just crazy to me. This is from Beauty by Pop Sugar. Now, they came out with a whole line of beauty products that are available at Ulta, and I just think that they are crazy overpriced. Some of them really look kind of hokey pokey weird. There are some items that I think I'm gonna be testing in an upcoming video, because I do have more than just this, and I wanna give a fair chance to the rest of the line, but this was the one thing that really jumped out at me that I swatched, I tried, and A, the design of it is just god awful. B, it feels super cheap. The eyeshadows are pretty patchy. Um, some of them are okay, but it's that like 50-50 where like half the palette's good, half the palette's bad. And when I open this up, I just want you to guess, like what do you think the price point for something like this should be? Because, I mean, I'm gonna throw real, real shade right now. This looks like something that you'd pick up at Claire's which I know Claire's has gone out of business, but you know, like kid makeup. It looks like kid makeup. It has makeup inside. Lots of secrets hidden inside. Makeup secrets brats kids can try. And then this shade right here to be the largest shade. I mean, I feel this is intended to be a highlight shade and that this kit would be better suited for medium to deep skin tones. But even still, I feel the setup is kind of strange. They do have another shade combo that has a lighter highlight, I believe right here, but this is just like very chunky metallic. And I just don't think it will sit on the face that great. Also getting into these little itty bitty sun rays. Like this just does not make any sense to me. Why? I don't, I, this does not make any sense to me. Pop sugar is gonna forever hate me now. All right, did you guess the price of this? Who guessed? $42. Why is this $42? Are you joking me? That is a ridiculous price point for something like this. Just think about that. Um, naked palette or this? All right, moving on. I have another palette right here. Uh, this is from Rude Cosmetics. The name kind of cracks me up. Uh, okay, so I wore one of their lippies in a recent video and I feel kind of bad because they saw that, like just from the description box. I didn't even talk about them in the video. They caught on in the description box, which leads me to believe that they watch my videos. Ugh. Okay, those lipsticks are pretty good. I'm testing out other items from their range, but I'm just gonna kind of call it what it is with this. This is 2150. What does this remind you of, right? Am I right? I'm right, hold on. Oh, oh my God. There are a lot of similarities here, you guys. Am I, do you see that? 
no. I'm not good with this. And this blends like crap. It is so choppy and patchy and streaky, and there's a lot of fallout. This one right here, I will forever be a diehard fan. This is actually the palette that makes me more curious about Morphe makeup in general. I'm not an affiliate to them. I have no benefit of talking about this or any of their brushes or products in general at all, but I do really like their eyeshadows. I'm curious about their blush palettes right now, their highlighters. I enjoy some of their brushes and not to like make this like a yay Morphe video, but I don't like it when a company comes along, especially with an influencer created product where you know, like we've all heard the story that Jaclyn Hill spent two years selecting particular colors and it was a labor of love. And then you have this. This is not a labor of love. This is a ripoff in my opinion, and it's just not that great. I will say this, uh, Rude Cosmetics has their eyeshadows in these little books like this. They're $21.50. The price is not bad. I've tried two of them now, and every time I have hated my eye makeup because the transition and darker shades end up being really choppy. This is a cute design. I like it. I think it looks like a children's book, and I love the design of it. I think that is really, really cool. I just wish the quality was better, and I wish I didn't open up this particular one and go, oh, Jaclyn Hill, you know? We have another eyeshadow palette. Now, this is from NARS, and when you look at the swatches, you're gonna be like, Tati's gone and lost her mind because those swatch beautifully, and they do. If you were to find this in person and just go boom, boom, boom on your arm, you'd be like, yes, I'm taking this home. Uh, but the problem is that they are just very chunky, and I'm hoping I can grab in a close-up shot just how chunky these are. It's that like metallic feeling that just has chunks to it, and if you don't blend it out perfectly, it can look really uneven. It can grab to certain creases in your eye, and I just am not a fan of this, and it is very expensive. So this was a pass for me. This is the NARS Danger Control Palette. Pass. I have a primer that I used a few times, and then a few times more, and then a few times after that, and I finally decided that this is just too liquidy and too oily for me to love. If you have very dry skin, maybe you will enjoy this. I know a lot of people really love this one. This is the Becca Velvet Blurring Primer Perfecting Base. Now this is suitable for all skin types. It's oil-free, but hydrating. It's that whole thing. Hyaluronic acid, good for you vitamins. It's gonna be great, not heavy, but to me it just made me really greasy. And the consistency is just really, really liquidy. It will separate if you don't shake it up. So if you forget and you're doing your makeup in the morning in a hurry and you take a pump, you'll be like, ah, oh, crap, you know, and then you'll do the shake and it will be better, but it's still very, very liquidy. It's said to have a powder finish. I really don't find that. This was just, it just didn't work for me. Oh my God, we have another primer. Looky here. Okay, A. This does not wanna stay on at all. This is $21. It's said to make everything go on smoother and last longer. And to me, this just made my eyeshadow patchy. I tried it over and over and over and over and over. And you can even see in past videos, it will be listed in the description for what I wore that day. And I just could not get this to work. I wanted to make it work. I don't know why I tried so hard, but I used it enough to know that this is not as good as the Urban Decay primers. Um, gosh, who else? I know my Tom Ford primer, that's way up there crazy expensive, but that is a really good one. And even just using a little concealer and setting it with some translucent powder is always a nice way to prime the eyes too. Oh, this day was a bad one. This mascara right here, this wand is just way too giant and way too long. It just like, look at how, <sighs> okay, that's exactly what I did, except for like I was do trying to do the fanning your lower lash line and I didn't realize I had so much goop on this and I like stabbed it and got it in my eye and it burned so bad. This is the Sumptuous Extreme Lash Multiplying Volume Mascara from Estee Lauder. It is going in the trash. This one was too goopy, the wand is too long, and the wand is the same on the full size and the mini. I just don't like it. Ooh, this did me wrong too, you guys. This is from Stila, and this is the Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. Oh my gosh, when I was trying it out, the KKW palette, and I got this in PR, and I was like, ooh, I wanna play with this right now to like touch up my eyeliner. And I went in, and it bled just like, 
just like straight away, ruined my eye look. I was just so devastated because I was doing like close up, you know, check ins. And I was like, great, now I have like black smeared all over matte white shadow, which is not a cute look. And this is just a giant no. I will say, what is a giant yes? And this is like my front runner little spot for brow stuff and whatnot. These two right here from Stila, the Kajal pencils. This is the Smudge Kajal Eyeliner in Espresso and an Intense Black. These are my favorites right now. Die Hard, love them. So Stila comes out with so many great things. That particular liquid liner though just did not do it for me. Lip liners from Zoeva. These are only 650 and I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, wow, she is so picky, like it's 650. But you know what, even something that is $6.50, I want to impress me and work well. And I think that Rimmel, uh, who else? Essence, Catrice, they all make great liners. And this just did not work out for me. I tried it a few times and the problem was it's waxy, but also very hard. So with the lighter shades, it's really difficult to get um, like a really even amount of color. It's something that's really hard to gather from a swatch. You actually have to try it on your lip, but you'll be pressing, like going over the line, going over the line, going over the line, trying to build up that frame, which you want from a lip liner. So it just did not do enough to wow me. This was a recent thing that was sent to me in PR. Again, I like the darker ones. Those for some reason have a creamier texture and more pigment, but the lighter shades just don't work on my lips. I don't know why, they just don't. All right, I have one more item here and it's actually also from Rude Cosmetics and it's already kind of fallen apart. So this is a company that makes products that are not crazy priced. Like this one I believe is like $14.50. This is the Angelic Glow palette. And obviously the problem is it, the quality is just not there. We know that you're not paying 50 bucks for this palette. But the shadows right here are very chunky. There are about two of them in here that really wow me. This one right here, Pure. It's very chunky, but it is super, super, super pigmented. Um, but I think that you could find that one singular shadow somewhere else for less money. The rest of the palette is really just kind of like not enough pigment. You go to build it, it gets even chunkier and layers weird. And for this kind of an iridescent effect, you want more smoothness and richness because you're probably gonna layer it over a darker shade or you want it to really stand out on its own. So I just wanted to share that with you. But I am trying more of Rude Cosmetics uh, mascaras, lip products. So I do wanna find things from the range to share with you guys that work out well. All right, you guys, those are the current roundup of bad products, products I would not recommend that didn't work out for me. And I hope I explained things well enough for you to decide if they would work out for you or not or all of that. And let me know if you don't mind these type of videos being more frequent here on my channel. Hit the thumbs up if you want to see them more. Um, I always run into products that don't work out for me pretty much on a daily basis. All right, I love you guys so much. Come back tomorrow because I am trying out some crazy new items from e.l.f. Cosmetics. They have a bunch of new things that I put to the test, some good, some bad, and that will be up tomorrow morning. Also hit the notification bell so that you are notified when that video does go up and then you can go and watch it. All right, I love you all so much and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Mwah.